wanted to create World Cup environment, what can you take out of big end to me? First of all, credit to, to everyone to help us create that World Cup environment, the way the Federation set up the tournament for the opponents to coming coming over here and give us that, that type of tournament, tournament for you, all in media that's been really on this and being very interested in creating a vibe around it and help us prepare in that as well. Uh, and also the fans, like all that gives it more of a real tournament feeling and we haven't played tournament football for a long time. So in that sense, it's been phenomenal for us. I take away a lot, obviously I want to get emotional distance to it to have sharp answers the one thing that we we did learn is what it feels to win you know and and we can't discard that they, it wasn't a brilliant game tonight for example it wasn't a brilliant first half against czech republic it wasn't a brilliant second half against spain but tournament football is about finding a way to win uh, grinding through believe in what you're doing and and i really credit the the players tonight the way they they stayed loyal and true to the plan we had and we grew into the game and then the other thing that we have realized in this tournament, when it comes to tournament football, that it's we can score goals and we can score goals in multiple different ways. I think we've averaged 3.3 goals the last seven games now. Um, and also we can attack that way and still we kept a clean sheet four out of the last five. So that's been very, very important learning moments. But I, I need to do more of an in-depth analysis before I can answer more than that. David. You mentioned, and I'm pretty sure it was after the Spain game, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, that you've chosen the playing or the starting 11 for this tournament based on who you think gives you the best chance to perform well in these games. And so I guess the, the two players, is that why Claire Hunt was selected or was it a reward for the first half in Gosford? And then why did you think Larissa Crummer was the best option in the first 45 tonight? I, I think this is interesting and I, I really want to once again stress how important it is to be good o over 90 minutes. Um, and, I, and I know we, we tend in football, both coaches and media and fans tend to, to always talk about what's the best starting lineup, who is starting, you know, why is that one not starting? I think we sometimes uh, miss to discuss what's the finishing 11, what's the game changes, how do we plan for 90 minutes, which player can have the best impact from the bench. And it's not that one player is better than the other because they start, it's because that player might be the best option to start the game, to then have different tools to change the game. Um, sometimes it's difficult, and as I said before, we coaches are paid to try to make decisions before we know if they're right and wrong. And we kind of scenario train ourselves in discussions to say, the game might look like this and we have that player first. Okay, what can happen? And you know, kind of create that scenario, what we think the game will look like. Um, for example, the, the, the discussion was, you know, Kramer Schitz, for example, because Schitz deserves to start based on performance. I think we all agree on that in here. Schitz deserves to start based on her performance. It doesn't mean she should start, you know, what's best for the game. And, and we thought that because we're looking at Jamaica, the first two games in this tournament, they tend to be really well organized in the first halves, but then they got stretched the longer the game went. And we felt that in that maybe Crummer's runs and power and set play pressing could give us more in the first half. And then when it opens up a little bit, Chid's ability to come in between lines and be faced up against that back line and maybe also unlock things if we need to unlock it, uh, which she did brilliantly. This time I got it right, next time I got it wrong. Or maybe you say it was wrong because she should have started, who knows. But it's it's a 90 minute lineup that is important to me, not just the starting lineup. Mm -hmm. um, on the outside. That was actually a load management this time. I had a long meeting with my Triple SM team, Sports Science, Sports Medicine, last night. And Charles' numbers uh, in terms of physical load have been off the chart the first two games. The amount of high speed running she has done has been unreal. She shouldn't actually be able to pull that through. She had only one 90 minute game in three months because she's in pre season in Sweden. She's not playing regularly. And uh, we needed to protect her. They said it might be an injury risk if we push her to, it's not no injury risk, like just the load. You know, when, it, when it's too much load, a play might break. Same thing with, with uh, Polk. She wasn't feeling well um, in terms of physical load as well. So we had planned to split the halves between them. And then you discuss how do we start and how do we finish. So that was actually a pre-planned sub based on load management. George. Tony, uh, I guess there's a good call this team. I'm thinking of people like Courtney Barnes and Claire Hunt who are playing. Domestically here, I think the grand final will be end of April. The World Cup obviously kicks off mid-July. Yeah. What's the plan for them in terms of where they go to, to keep in that shape? Because both of them played fantastically this, this window. I agree. 
First, I want to credit the, the players and the A-League for what they do with the players in terms of developing players. We see now that a player goes straight in from A-League to play international football. Um, and it's, you know, that step is tough because it's not, if you look at the physical numbers, we know it's not the same to play club football. The same if you look at the league in England, if you look at the league in Sweden, the high speed meters and intensity of the games is not the same as international football. So that's natural. So it's not the criticism, it's just natural. To be able then to jump up to international level and handle that, uh, it takes a lot of extra work for players and clubs to do. So I think, you know, credit to the A-League clubs and to the players to be ready for international football. That's massive sends messages as well to players that play domestically, like if you work hard and the door opens, be ready, right? Secondly, that is a massive important part of our plan. What do we do with the players that finish the, the leagues earlier? How can we make sure we cover that gap? What can we do for them as a national team staff? What can clubs do for them? What can they do themselves? So we have already started that process to look, look into different alternatives. I can't tell you now what that looks like but we are looking into what those situations can look like because it's a massive important part of our preparation for World Cup same for the ones that finish in England for example they finish in the end of May and then you know World Cup starts 20 of July what do we do with them in those weeks so that, that's a massive part of the preparation plan well, final four questions so it kind of does look like you are spending the first half kind of easing into the game and, and just reading it um, then that allows you to kind of bring on those game changes I think that's that's what you learn as coaches as well. A tournament football is a bit different than normal friendlies when you want to look at players or look at system. This is coaching to win, which sometimes is different. It's reading the game and, and kind of feel do we have momentum, do we don't have momentum, what kind of play, what changes do we need now? How do we you know, in game communication, how can we communicate? You saw against Spain, for example, we ended up in a six back for a while because of miscommunication from bench to players. That happens in 80,000 in the stands. We don't hear each other. How can we learn from that? So definitely we try to, to learn as coaches as well in in-game in, in -game coaching. And and tonight it was one of those, like you said, we had to read where is the momentum, what do we need to do in halftime, which players can change the game. But I also think that slow start was not just because we wanted to read the game, it was also because we, we, we weren't really on fire like we normally, because you've seen when we're on fire, like when we're high octane pressing, running, that's how we want to play. Sometimes we're not there, then we need to find different ways to get into the game. And tonight we weren't really there in terms of that. Renee, and then we'll close with Isabel. Um, I just wanted to ask about Emily Van Edmond and um, the fact that I think she hasn't played since November in, in the preseason um, in the US. Was, was that a bearing on why she was kind of played as 2025 off the bench in the group? Uh, it's, it's a mix of it. She missed the camp with injury last year um, and then obviously when Kyra Hamini got the opportunity to play centrally uh, they similar to, to Maka they grabbed that opportunity and, and played really really well and, and ever since I think we've had a centre midfield pairing that have shown that they find chemistry and played really really well together and it's been tough then to come back into the team. If you look at Mary Fowler, same, similar situation, starting a lot of games and then you know now have a little bit you know work hard to, to come in. But EVE has been phenomenal this camp in terms of training quality because uh, it's a tough situation. It's a player that used to start a lot of games and now she hasn't started for a while. She's been the best teammate. She's been very professional in training and she's shown when she came in in the games as well that she's ready to play the games off the bench as well. And we just need every single player to keep pushing for spots and challenge me for playing time because that's what we need come World Cup. The final is a two-parter. Um. Small, small. <laughs> First of all, um, Rasso, we were, she was one of those we were a bit worried about coming into camp because she hasn't played minutes in clubland. And normally when you came from, come from very limited minutes in clubland, it's difficult to perform at the international level. And that's been very impressive, the football she's been playing. And I think what she did is she checked in to where she was last time she was with us. You know, like you go from club to country, maybe it's not the best situation in club, but last time she was with us, she had good performance, she felt good, she put that on again and felt confident, I'm back here now, you know, teammates believe in me, coaches believe in me, I get playing time, and then she, you know, she's self-firing. But the other thing is the training environment she's in is amazing. So training daily basis in that training environment gets her ready as well for, for international football. 
When it comes to silverware, we, we spoke about that actually yesterday when we circled up after training and we used a couple of places as example. They've been with this national team for 15 to 17 years, some of them. And they've only lifted silverware three times since we moved to Asia, you know, 2010 Asian Cup and then 18 and 19. Um, sorry, 17 and 19, uh, two tournament wins, lifting trophies. So this doesn't come around too often, the chance to win a trophy and lift it. And we need to, to take the opportunity to get that feeling, what it feels to win. Um, and that was amazing. I can't wait to get into both the staff and players here now in, in the locker room and really circle up and thank them for this tournament and really embrace that moment and, and feeling of winning because it's, it's addictive.